We have seen the octahedral complexes, we have seen the tetrahedral complexes. These are the two most important classes of compounds that are present over the let us say whatever chemistry known so far. There are other complexes as you have seen it could be you know penta coordinated, the metal complex can be penta coordinated two different types of geometry is possible for penta coordination. Out of that trigonal bipyramidal is one of the preferred geometry. So, there are lot of things that we can definitely go on and discuss about it, but it is literally impossible to discuss each and every structure in detail, each and every metal complex kind of different geometry in detail and how they are know ligand field will affect the d orbital splitting. So, geometry changes d orbital splitting pattern changes I think just by learning octahedral and tetrahedral you have got that sense. Now, it has all to do with the way the ligand is approaching. Sometime ligand is approaching directly towards the atomic orbital of the of each of those metal or d orbital of the metals and thereby you can see the extent to which it gets stabilized or destabilized is differing right. So, if you take technically speaking if you take a trigonal bipyramidal perhaps you would be able to at least understand why the splitting is such that ok. In the syllabus we for, for you guys we do not have any other geometry to discuss octahedral and tetrahedral if possible you can look at little bit at trigonal bipyramidal TBP ok. Now, square pyramidal or square planar is something which will come soon, square planar is basically nothing but octahedral geometry you are having you take out two z axis, you have octahedral scenario you take out two z axis that is become square planar. So, we will discuss that. So, in the last class once again we were discussing Warner coordination theory, 18 electron rule, valence bond theory and how good it is and then how bad it is and how good the crystal field theory is. Really we will stop there how good the crystal field theory is and not too much we will get into the MO approach molecular orbital approach ok. There are I mean no end to learning I think for this course purpose we will stop in there not too much afterwards ok. So, the major objective for this syllabus or for this chapter and the next chapter is definitely giving you an idea about these high spin low spin complexes. The spectrochemical series I hope you have come across this term in the last class crystal field stabilization energy, yarn Taylor distortion and spinel these are the last two topics we will discuss today. I will briefly give you an overview of what we have discussed in the last class. So, this is an octahedral complex metal center is there at the middle of it. So, that is at the center of the geometry it is a metal center metal and ligand are almost having electrostatic interaction it is a positive charge and negative charge are the ligand which are interacting with the metal center. Remember in the valence bond theory we were mainly assuming it is a covalent structure ok. As you see this is axial position that is also axial position this is the direction where d z 2 orbital is d z square or d z 2. Now, these are the direction these 4 1 2 3 4 these 4 are the ones where we have d x 2 d y 2 orbital directly it is not indirect this is where is actually d x 2 y 2. So, therefore, from this you can understand why d z 2 and d x 2 y 2 orbital is most destabilized for octahedral geometry 
because they are the one which facing the music basically they are they are the one which is getting rippled most because ligand electrons and the d orbital electrons are rippling each other very simple now all other orbitals d x y d y z d x z they are not facing these ligands directly they are in between somewhere here 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 so in between so thereby they are not going to get rippled too much they are going to get rippled but not too much okay relative to dx2 y2 and dz2 they are going to stabilize okay so just a quick look at the orbitals what we have discussed in the last class dz2 orbital dx2 y2 orbital okay now these are the other orbitals with respect to these three other orbitals you can see where the ligands are therefore you can understand the stabilization or the destabilization of this Yeah, that's a good question. Usually, that is where we will come to Jan Taylor distortion. Okay, that I guess that you will be able to clearly understand when we are discussing the Jan Taylor distortion. That is the actually the origin of Jan Taylor distortion and J elongation and J in. Okay, we'll come back. Now, this is the same thing in a different bottle. I think whatever. it's you you just look at it it gives you a very clear idea these are the ligands the black balls are the ligands and the and the metal orbitals or d orbitals are shown in here clearly okay no confusion right now as we were showing in the last class so these are d orbitals and this is let's say ligand electrons ligand electrons are coming for these orbitals to overlap right now first instance we will discuss the dz2 interaction with the ligand ligand electrons comes they are, will be repelling each other therefore dz2 will be destabilized dz2 is facing the ligand once again directly this is the dx2 y2 one okay now here you see that the four ligands are coming along all these axes to answer to that previous question one of the way you can see is these are four lobes four lobes divided by four ligands and two lobes divided by two ligands kind of that's how perhaps it's you know you don't have to worry usually but finer details when it is unsymmetrically filled right dz2 and dx2 although they are of same energy but if they are unsymmetrically filled let's say one is there in the eg orbital or three is there in the eg orbital then the problem comes okay now so you have seen the you have seen how they are coming and thereby they are also getting these orbitals are getting destabilized okay all other d orbital like these three are like dxy dxz and dyz they are really not facing the orbitals directly as you can see they are sitting right in between and there boy you can see so for example over here we have shown dxz same is true for dxy and dyz thereby these orbitals are relatively mind you relatively stabilized with respect to dz2 and dx2 y2 if you compare the free metal ion with respect to free metal ion everything is destabilized because free metal ion has no ligand thereby no repulsion the moment ligand comes repulsion starts so the system's energy goes up okay now overall therefore you have two up three down okay but net stabilization with respect to that barry center the center in the middle the net stabilization or destabilization for a completely filled d orbital let's say d10 or d5 in a high spin situation which we have discussed should be the zero stabilization if it is completely filled total stabilization and total destabilization has to be the same okay 
Now this is where again once again this is kind of a clear picture, this is a octahedral field we were showing, 6 ligands coming at this box. So, if you are um, assuming that this is a box, 6 ligands are facing the way it is shown, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, this is the free metal ion, this is the metal complex, 3 of the T2G got stabilized, 2 of the EG got destabilized. Okay. Now, this is EG not E, E will be for tetrahedral, T2G not T2. Okay. Now, of course, I think I have discussed this information already. Now, since this is 3 of them, this is 2 of them, this distance between this barycenter and the stab stabilization for T2G, yeah. Ligand may be different, yeah. Here we are thinking, see, we have to ideal, deal with the idealistic world at the beginning. ML6, ligands are same. ML6. We are not thinking like 3 of the chloride, 3 of the fluoride, that is a mixed situation. Okay. For just to discuss, of course, those situation comes, often comes, but this is, if we do not understand, I mean very simple situation, how can we go complex. Okay. So, of course, let us say if you have 3 chloride and 3 cyanide, what will be the situation? Right. That, that is a special you know, topic on this, how, how finer details you can get in the d orbital splitting. Initially it may split and then they may further split. If you have all of them, let us say weak field, like 3 fluoride and let us say 3 chloride, they may be having behaving same. But the moment you have one weak field, one strong field ligand, things will be little bit complicated. Okay. So, overall how much ligand, I think Overall, you have to see whether it is a strong field ligand or weak field ligand, whether it is a first point, whether it is a octahedral geometry or tetrahedral geometry and thereby go for it. For the exam purpose for this course, I do not think we will be clicking into anything which is mixed, little bit more complicated than that. For exam purpose or for this course purpose, you have to just know octahedral field splitting and tetrahedral. And we will be discussing briefly about the square planar because that is kind of comes automatically. Furthermore, if you want to learn, maximum go to trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, we will give those splitting. But you know, as again, um, it is a, it's a more complex than we would like to think. We are just dealing idealistically. Okay. That is a good question. So, over here we see that this stabilization should be 0.4, 2 by 5 delta 0, 0.4 delta 0, this destabilization would be 0 0.6 delta 0. We have discussed it or 4 dq, 6 dq, if it is delta 0 or 10 dq, we have discussed, right. Now, the first advantage of this crystal field theory is you can explain the magnetic properties, you can expect to explain the, you know, spectros spectroscopic behavior let us say UVB study, why certain peaks are coming. So, this is where I, I, we were telling that if you have an unpaired electron, if you are moving from T2G to EG, the spectra you get will be something like this absorption maximum. Of course, we are not getting into finer details of the spectra, but this is the major origin where from electrons are moving and where it is going. So, from T2G, this is a D1 electronic configuration, one electron is there. So, T2G1, that means over here, T2G1, one electron was over here, you all these three orbitals are degenerate, same energy, only way it can go is up to here. Now, if you think, if EG is splitted further, th these, these two orbitals are DX2, Y2 and DZ2. If it is splitted further, so the electron can go to two different levels, right. Therefore, you can expect two different peaks, whether intensity will be high or low that is of course, then you have to think about the symmetry and lot of other things which we will not be discussing. But you can sense where the spectra is coming from and where the electron is you know moving from 
I mean, which orbital to where it is going, okay? So this is fine. So you get the spectra. Now we have also seen crystal field stabilization energy. So you calculate, you are given, I think you have to really master this. You should be able to do it in your dream, okay? D3 electronic configuration. What is the crystal field stabilization energy if octahedral? D5, what is, if it is octahedral, how many scenarios are there? Two scenarios, how high spin and low spin, right? So what will be the crystal field stabilization energy? Any question, in especially in exam, if you see, before even thinking too much, I would say, just imagine the scenarios. Only three scenarios you have. Octahedral two scenario, high spin, low spin, and tetrahedral, only high spin scenario, 99 percent case. We'll, we'll discuss one case today which is otherwise, but that's it. Octahedral two scenario and tetrahedral one scenario, done. So once you have that, I think the answer should come out almost, like why something is preferred, why something is not preferred. At least I would say out of 25 mark question, 5 marks to 7 marks will be based on that indirectly. I mean, of course, it will not be given perhaps on a platter. Definitely, you will be able to figure out about that. So, please do familiar. You should not be fearing about calculating and electronic configuration should be always correct. There should not be any mistake, okay. Now, so D5 system, for example, one case we were giving. So, this is the D5 high spin, that means three stabilization, two destabilization, CFSC should be zero, right? That's what I was trying to say. So, net stabilization and destabilization should be zero if it is symmetrically filled, okay? So, this is zero. You don't have to even calculate. If it is D10, it is again zero. D10 means all of them are full. So, stabilization is equal to destabilization. So, that is where, let's say you are given D7 and this is the configuration, 5, 6, 7. So, 5 take out 5 because 5, 3 plus 2 has stabilized, destabilized and cancel each other out. Now, you just deal with 2. 2 will be D7, 2 will be over here and here, right? So, that will be minus 8 DQ or 0.8 delta 0 or de delta octahedral. You should be able to do it really, really quick without calculating and going through the simple math. Now, of course, D7 you can have also high spin and low spin configuration. For example, this one, what would be the CFSC minus? So, of course, minus that is out of question, it is stabilization. Each of them are 0.4. So, 5 of them 20 minus 20 or minus 2 uh, sorry yeah minus uh, 2 delta 0 okay that is it. Delta 0 means delta octahedral delta O I mean different people pronounce it different way okay. So, this is it I mean if you do it really simply I am sure 5 to 7 mark question will be there I mean invariably whatever it is the question is based on that it is going to be based on that. Now, of course, we have discussed it, two, once again, two scenarios, high spin because the spin is maximum, high spin. Low spin means spin is minimum, you see one unpaired spin. Now, if you look at the, I will come back to the magnet, magnetic behavior. Magnetic behavior is nothing but due to the unpaired electron, right? So, the moment you have unpaired electrons, magnetic behavior comes because the parallel spin will cancel each other. You want to spin on that direction and I want to spin on this direction. So, it will be cancel out, canceling. So, this is the one will have low magnetic value, magnetic moment value. This is the one will have high magnetic value. This is the origin for molecular magnet. A lot of molecules are magnet, okay. And these are the ones you see the application almost everywhere, literally everywhere. You take any electronic gadgets, you take almost anything which is electronic in nature, which has some fancy application, it is the material 
it is the material which are having magnetic properties and that is why they are used how expensive it is based on that you know you will you will get your material of course in lot of other cases you see the use of these things i will show one or two case today okay so dependence of delta zero like how much splitting is going on that depends on the nature of the ligands as i was trying to tell you whether it is a weak field ligand or strong field ligand strong field means the splitting will be very high weak field means the splitting between t to g and eg will be small and therefore for weak field ones we will always see high spin means spin will not be pairing up okay and the charge on the metal of course if it is a high higher charge you will have higher separation if it is 5d you will have higher separation compared to 3d right so this is the spectro electrochemical series with respect to different ligands these are the stronger one stronger ligands these will these are the one which almost always will give you the low spin sorry high uh, which one low spin complex because the splitting will be high strong field ligand splitting will be high so the spin pairing will happen it cannot go from t to g to e g okay these are the one which are likely to give you low spin complexes is it getting clear if it is you are getting i mean sometime it, it is little bit confusing it is either yes or no type of answer question i mean the understanding is either yes or no high spin or low spin right so just get it clear now this is the trend we have shown for tetrahedral case we were dealing with a completely different scenario which can be clearer from this picture if you remember the previous picture for octahedral case which was nothing but direct confrontation here it is like more of a political approach okay um you know diplomatic approach you do not go direct you just talk with okay so they are talking and they are not directly confronting thereby the scenarios are completely different since it's not interacting directly overlapping directly with let's say those eg orbitals previously we have seen for octahedral cases dx2 y2 and dz2 dz2 is over here actually and see the ligand where it is ligand is here dz2 is here actually those orbitals are the ones those eg orbital for octahedral case are the ones which are farthest from the ligand which are farthest and thereby they are the one which will get stabilized the other three orbitals dxy dyz dxz those are the ones which are nearer not directly overlapping but closer and thereby they are destabilized okay now this difference is called delta t and this delta t is going to be 4/9th of the delta o or delta 0 two third coming from the number of ligands 6 to 4 octahedral to tetrahedral another two third coming from indirect approach not from direct approach if it was directly approaching that is the case of octahedral case but here indirect approach basically you can calculate based on the angle which angle it is coming okay so roughly roughly these are like rough calculation it is becoming two third times two third four nine of delta 0 so delta t is always less therefore you never see almost never ever see low spin case for tetrahedral since the splitting is very less always you end up getting high spin case so never ever calculate tetrahedral for high spin oh uh, sorry low spin now this is the electronic configuration and their respective stability if you are comparing delta octahedral and delta tetrahedral directly so what happens how much stability is there if it is d1 for octahedral case d1 for tetrahedral case and we are comparing apple versus apple that means high spin versus high spin 
high spin of octahedral and high spin of tetrahedral. Tetrahedral cannot have low spin. In tetrahedral case, we have to normalize the value with the 4 9 of delta 0. These two. You do it, you will get this. Should be, you should be able to get it. Okay. 